Uh, welcome to the show and welcome Joe from the Vape Shack Liverpool. Um, we'll wait till one or two perhaps more come in, into the onto the show. But Joe, you're a you're a, a YouTube virgin, aren't you? Mm, that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't be uh, don't be frightened or daunted by it. I'm sure that'll be absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. And they're a friendly bunch in chat as well. So just say good evening. How many have we got in there? So look, like, oh, it's only six. Where is everyone? Evening, Neil. Neil Roberts. Uh, Manic. Good evening, Daniel. <coughs> Daniel Lawler. Uh, fresh that's, name, I think. Daniel. It's one of your customers, is it? Excellent. It well, welcome to the show, Daniel. Uh, Simon, evening Simon, Andy, still didn't message Andy, <laughs> I must do that, uh, the Faceless Vapor, uh, is that one of your customers, Faceless Vapor, um, good evening anyway, evening Daniel, Jezza, Lynn, Rich. evening Lynn, and Curly Chew, there you go, there's one or two more in, in now, 21, that's it, so it's not me late tonight for a change, it's everyone else, so, uh, yeah, if you'd like to introduce yourself, Joe, tell everyone where you're from and where they can come and see you as well. So, it's, uh, my name's Joe, and this is uh, from the Vape Shack in Prescott, near Liverpool. Um, it's about six or seven miles from Liverpool, I'd say, so it's on the outskirts. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'd say go to the website, but the website's under construction, so... Um, Finding us would be the only way to be actually walk through the door, I suppose, <laughs> at the minute. You got a message there from Daniel Lawler. Go on, Joe, up, up the vape shack. <laughs> Must be one of your customers. Well, you know, it's lovely to have you on the show. That's I asked Joe to come on. That's nice of you to come on. I thought probably it'd be nice to do a a sort of perspective from a an on from an online shop, which is me, and a and a bricks and mortar shop. Uh, which is Joe and Joe's had we were talking the other day Joe's had one or two experiences lately that you know I think is interesting and these discussing um, pretty much from day one sorry uh, so pretty much from day one we've had like experiences with such um, authorities we could say the trading standards trading standards etc and possibly Bricks and mortar shops are, are there, you know, they're more prone to that than perhaps online shops are. We're a bit more, a bit more hidden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, depending on, I think it's the office, the officer as well and the borough's um, yeah, yeah, yeah. type that's there, I suppose. Some boroughs apparently have different um, priorities, should we say. So if a, a borough's got a lot of chemical plants or whatever, they're, they're quite looked in. Into some quite dangerous products and chemicals and stuff, whereas the borough doesn't have such um, in it. The, the offices obviously have got the time to go and look at other sectors, I suppose. Um, Sorry, I'm laughing. Yeah. I'm laughing because there's a comment there from Jezza. Is it mandatory for vape shop owners in that area to wear baseball caps, hoodies, and sport and beard? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mandatory. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, the uniform <laughs> standard issue. Funny enough, I, I, I've, I had the nickname at one point. I, I basically always wore a hat. Um, not so much this style cap, but this came through this industry, should we say? Um, yeah, but, yeah, hats are something that I've always wore, so I suppose that's. Yeah, that's right. why I was the beard and hoodies mainly work top. Beard and hoodies, I, I think, it, I mean, it is quite typical, I don't know why, but it uh, does seem, evening Keith. So, would you like to tell us what you're, what you're vaping on, Joe? Myself? Yeah. I've got uh, two vapes, I've got the Notion, I think it's called, is it, from Times Vape, the little 18350. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. And it's got, yeah. Uh, the old Jenny V2 on it from Otis Designs. Right. Pretty good. That was tested now. It's a new product we just got. And I've got the uh, another Otis Designs product. It's the Tanko. And that's on a Aegis Mini. Right. Yeah. Do you like the Aegis uh, Mini? That's got, 
custard in. That's funny. You like the Aegis Mini or not? Uh, it was something that I did a little trade with a customer for the body. It was something I weren't. I was looking at the 8650 model just as like a right and every mod, I suppose. But then I went, uh, I went for this because it was a uh, part of the deal. We could say right, <laughs> came with okay. it, so I thought I'd use it. <laughs> now, so uh, it, your sort of uh, your favourite vape? Are you more of a, a dripper then, or a very such very all over the place? Pod systems quite a bit and vary. It depends, so it, it it can be down to the product that we get in. Whether it'll be testing things, you know, running new things can be. It's hard to get grips of something if you don't use it a lot. If you've yeah. got like five or six vapes in rotation, you can't really say whether the battery life's any good because you've not really yeah yeah and, and used a customer I would. So it, sometimes you've got to just forget everything else and use that product and then work through but yeah very I like mechanical mods have always been something that I've used for a long time um, that was one of the things that when we first opened the shop was something that we had slightly different than the mainstream and right. that was something that basically got me into the industry because we're opening the shop when we opened the shop it was 2014 and prior to that uh, probably about Two years prior, I thought about the e-cigarette industry, um, right. but yeah. decided, is it going to go anywhere else than an EVOD at that time? Right. And then yeah. ended up getting introduced to a, a vape shop over in Northwich, and it changed ever since. I went through the doors and they had mechanical mods, K-Funds, Russians, I think it was the Russian 91% back then. Which was oh, the, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah meant to be the that. clone of the, the yeah. K-Fund. Well, pretty, um, pretty much was really, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, and then I, I got addicted to vaping. I was just watching YouTube videos and I became obsessed, I suppose, with it. And yeah. that led to this now. So I suppose the mechanical mods, the old faithful, you could say, if <laughs> you revert yeah. back to it. Yeah, I was got one of mine out the other day. The, I was using it. It's the Futoon uh, H24, that little mech mod. Um, like that one. It's yeah. nice. But, you know... Yeah. Not high end, um, but the, the, the something I chose because there was no nothing to go wrong. And then prior to me opening this business, I was a scaffolder, so twelve years doing that. Oh right. And obviously having a vape with electrics in and glass and things like it was always a risk that you're going to break it. So I thought, well, a mechanical mod and a dripper is pretty much as robust as you're going to get. Um, and that's what I stuck with, I suppose, purely for right. Jezzer has put a comment on that. Uh, again, whoops, I missed that there. Put it up. Uh, he's asked, can he just see that little 18350 set, set up again? Let me remove his comment. That won't be in the way then. <coughs> yeah, so it's a bottom firer, is it? Yeah, it's going to be, yeah. You're right. Pretty much like the Dreamer button, basically, off the Dreamer. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it go crosses over to it. It may. Because the question lies is why you did a, a 2350. Because as far as I'm aware, there's like not many available, if any, the vape industry at the minute. Right. So unless there's something on the horizon uh, that they may know. Um, so I was just reading there. Apparently there's a little bit of feedback you're in. But I think you, you have muted the sound you're in. If, if there is feedback, just, just tell us. Maybe it's I've got to turn the volume down or something. But you've got a good internet connection there, have you? Myself, I've got <coughs> um, hit and miss times in the shop. Hit and miss, well, maybe that's <laughs> what it is. Through, um, <laughs> maybe that's what it is. So that's everything you're you're vaping on, is it? Even in Salford, I did see it, David. Minute, I've, got, I've left a couple of vapes at home. I've been using the Meepod quite a lot, and um, I've been running the Purge Ally, mm -hmm. which is um, an orchid. In disguise, right? Okay. Maybe you could say, yeah, yeah. And um, the batch light is not on it. It's it's okay. Right. Oh, and the Aspect Micro is another product I've been using quite a lot. Which is quite good. Oh, is it? quite bad. Right. I don't think I've seen that one. Aspect Mini. It looks it's like, like a billet box, basically. The oh, is it? oh, I have. Yes, I know what you mean now. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Evening, Iggy. No. Look. 
Okay, oh, even Kieran as well, everyone. See, everyone's late tonight, look. Everyone's, looks, yeah, and Jezza said it looks really good. Right, what am I vaping on? Well, I'm, I'm not on much new, to be honest. I've got a couple of new bits to tell you about. I'm on my little Bantam with the crossbow inside. There you go, that's a crossbow inside. It's a bit low, actually, isn't it? That'll last me on the show. <laughs> Just a little mouth to lung. Uh, true tank as always again that's fairly low <laughs> I've also been using the Solomon I got a bit new sorry Solomon it's the Aladdin mouth to lung uh, funny shape thing I don't know if you can see that Joe it's a one of the pieces of the Taj Mahal mm. could be yeah. a name for it but I don't know bit, <laughs> of a, a bit of a story to that one I helped Keys a lot with the development of that we went through about three prototypes and I ordered them on the 12th of August I think um, and as of last week they still hadn't arrived and everyone else had got theirs so I felt a bit miffed um, as you know products only have a certain sort of lifetime you get that initial hit and then sales peter off and a good product will keep ticking over but once you miss that hit and i had quite a lot on order then you know it, the, it's gone isn't it it's done and dusted especially for online so i think, uh, I, I think there's more than one window i think uh, there is a big window of, uh, i believe that there's we see it where products will come out onto the market that us in the, obviously in the industry, and anyone who's uh, enthusiastic paper will be obviously up to date with what's releasing, etc. But the yeah. main sometimes don't. Yeah, so, so we yeah, get, I agree with that. There is a bit of a, 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 a problem. Yeah. Okay, that was, you know, a shock. But yeah. So I think there is the big window, and then there's also the you will sell, and then there's products that I say to some some products, if they don't sell now, they'll sell in another twelve months or. Give it even even two years, you know, you'll sell them and they'll become mm. retro. You know, some things are in demand now that you can't get. <coughs> That's also true. Um, you know, things do come back in favour, and and there isn't any any stock. But I mean, for me anyway. But basically, I mean, Kieran's just asked, are they finally in? No, they're not, Kieran. I cancelled the order. So uh, I just thought I have been going through a bit of a spate where companies do seem to be treating you badly and, and I've I've had enough if they treat me badly I, I'm out so and that's what I've done with that now there are the odd sort of mitigating circumstances I'm not saying I've fallen out with keys I haven't I just thought you know a, a lesson learned probably so but anyway I'm not going to go too deep into that I uh, don't want to get the show all depressed what else am I on I'm still on the did a review for this the Futoon um <clears throat> aqua master rda so this will this will <laughs> cloud us out <laughs> i've got that in temp control 400 temp control you got that i don't normally do that but there's stainless steel coil in there so i decided to go temp control um i got have you seen them yet What we're looking at the body or the tank? No the tank. Oh, it's a bit like okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. It's the wasp nano tank. Correct. It? It's the wasp mouth to lung. Uh, their new tank. Uh, mm. <coughs> They've what? just released. They've sent me it's a gold. I know it will be like some of the, the weird odd Chinese wholesale <laughs> companies and two F eight and three F eight and right. You can get them. You get them to see what's pre ordered and. Yeah, yeah. Be yeah. Before you know, some people say so. Well, they always keep out of the game, I suppose. Well, they sent me this. Well, they sent me three of these tanks, and I mean, I don't know what you think, but <laughs> I sort of looked at it and I thought, oh god. <laughs> the same, the same styling as the the wasp nano, I think it is, is it? Well, the, like wasp, the, the wasp the nano, I thought vaped quite well, um, but and I quite like that. It's not not a bad little tank. I did have it up here. But this is just even the chimney is plastic. I'll I'll get one out in a little while. But the main the thing for me is I could have put that all at one side if it vaped well, but it doesn't. 
That's a mouth too long. Yeah. It's on. Is it okay with heat and things? It's, is, it, is it? Well, there's all the airflow is open, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's dual, dual only. I mean, I can't mouth too long that as a. I can direct lung it. Now, <clears throat> as a mouth to lung, let's go to one hole. It's still far, far too open for me, and it's tasteless. So, yeah, I think some companies may be able to produce mouth to lung tank and not. <clears throat> so, there you go. They probably they won't send me anything else <laughs> when they see that. But I don't care. I mean, why should my customers or your customers or anyone else member of the public why why should they waste their money if something's garbage so there you go so that's that one that's good <laughs> we're getting all the Sweet. rubbish out, out of the way and then we'll get on to some good stuff i've also now got to complete the range of the true juice the black currant raspberry and lime in short fill and the vimto so there's okay. now What's it so the we're looking for right now, to be honest. Is it? I actually mm, had, I had one not, not in that price category, but... Right. Probably a little bit more retail than what we're looking for for that. We Vinto's a popular flavour, so... Yeah, yeah. If it's a good one, it's a good one, yeah. Um, is it... Have you actually called it Vinto, though? Because Vinto's a brand, so just be aware that... I think we were okay. We, we looked into that, and I think we were okay. But yes, it is Vinto. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, and you know we, we we have to be careful of things like that. I'm just recapping over uh, chat to make sure. I'm sure I've probably missed a load. Um, oh, I was, I was reading Merck's comment. I'm thirty odd. I don't own a hat and can't grow a beard. <laughs> uh, what else have we got here? Um, I think that's a lot of it. It's just oh, oh Jezza said thank you. It looks really good. Uh, your mod. Um, okay. I don't think we're just Merc. Let's see what he's put on there. Let's put it on the screen. Just got the Reckoning RDA by Immortal Mods for twenty notes. It is a beast. Okay, that's another one I haven't heard of. I don't. Have you heard of that one? The Reckoning. Sometimes by. The Reckoning, was it called? Yeah. I haven't heard of that one. So, oh, there's so many, isn't there? So many new things that we can't can't keep track of all of them. Yeah, that, that can be... Are you searching? You're, look, you're looking at it. Oops. Okay. Uh, I've seen it before. I've not just Googled the... Uh, it was. Okay, see, is it 30 mil? Might be 30 mil, Might be mistaken. No, I think, he said, it, I think he said it was an RDA. Thanks, Andy. Well, well 30 million in, in diameter, but it's an, an RDA. Right. Okay, right. I'm not sure. Ben, what's that? Is this one of your customers? Cheech? 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 DWP? Ben vaping with Vic instead. What's that all about? <laughs> Not sure, <anyways. laughs> Behave. We can't talk about poor old Victor like that. Um. Oh uh, right, and Kieran. Let's put Kieran's comment up there. Um, do you have both varieties, a metal chamber or plastic chamber? Well, I think the one I've built up was a plastic. They did in the box. You like get a bubble glass one and a a normal. Well, that's plastic as well. So I've got two plastic. Does that make sense? Don't know. But if you want one, Kieran, you can have one, mate. Um, because you know I've got about three. I opened the gold. We'll call it gold one because I thought it was probably the worst color. So if I was going to do a review, I'd save a stainless steel one to do a review but no i happy to send you on kieran not a problem at all let's get rid of that <coughs> one of the vape do you using is it the dove pot you're using uh, the body 
Which, that one? Yeah, or, that's the one. Or yeah, the, yeah. I was looking at that one on your site. The Ember 60. Mm. Yeah, this one's like the um, DeWalt type version. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah, it, yeah, but they do... Where's my plain black one? So red, do, and red, and red and black, black. and plain black. Brilliant little mod. I mean, we, we used to sell a lot of the artery. And Archery, yes, yeah. they're a little bit bigger, but not much. And, you know, they are a good mod. They are good. Uh, Kieran, let's load it down. Daniel, got my strawberry custard true, true juice today, and it's beautiful. Excellent. Thank you, Daniel. Coil Proby. Cheech, um, I don't know who you are, but I, I will say we have a friendly chat and, you know, I, I don't know if you're joking. If you're humorous, that's fine. We love a bit of humor, but, you know, I just saw your last comment. You know, let's keep it nice. Um, ABC, Coil UK, good evening. Uh, and Lynn hasn't tried a strawberry yet. Lynn has tried. You've tried three, haven't you, Lynn? I'm not sure which ones you've you've tried. Neil Roberts. Let's put this one up. Neil, not stopped using True Tank since I got it. Anyone not yet got one? Oh, put an order on. You'll not be disappointed. Excellent. My kind of comment. Thanks, Neil. And more pleased that you like it. That's the main main issue, isn't it? And if you're getting on with something, if you find something you get on with, then, you know, it's great. You don't have to go out and keep looking to spend money unless you choose to. Uh, Merck has said that that RDA is a 25 mil, he thinks, and it fits, on the, fits on the top side, like a glove. Um, but, but, but I think I'm catching up. I think I'm catching up. Kieran, uh, while I while I talk about Kieran, let, let, can I just say something? Kieran, I'll say it open on air. Thank you ever so ever so much. What's a true tank? Bugger off. <laughs> That's his comment. Um, thank you ever so much. Kieran did a review on my concentrates and the true juice, and he did it in a part one and a part two. Mix in the concentrates first, like a, a tutorial, and then he reviewed the flavours to, to let everyone know what they thought. I know from experience, having done that tutorial on mixing flavours, how long that takes and the hours it takes and the preparation. So just a massive thank you, Kieran, that's all. Um, just to say, you know, cracking job that you did. Somewhere here, I have, I'll embarrass him now, there he is. There's Kieran uh, up on the screen, and and that's his channel. Give him a look, folks. Have a look at the the two videos, and give him a little subscribe as well. He needs encouragement. We all do. We all need that encouragement. So that's it. Gush over. But thank you, Kieran. Um, Mike's Mick reviews. What's Mike saying? And good evening, Mike. Nice to see you. Mark that. Cheech is a major pain. The live caster's backsides. He... Oh, really? Okay. Well, I've got two spanners in chat. Thank you, Mike. Um, could you just spanner him, please? So, <laughs> we don't often do it. We don't have to do it very often. We've got a lovely little um, crew that we seem to have regularly come and see us. But you get the odd idiot, don't you? So, it looks like we've got an idiot tonight. Um, Iggy, Dark Star 200. And... What's that? What's that? What's that? Dark Star 2 times 250ml bottles for 30 quid at 3mg. Whether she was talking to someone else in chat, but I don't mind. I'll advertise Dark Star as well. We don't care. What what goes around <laughs> is good to share, isn't it? And, and that's why I've, you know, I've asked Joe on tonight. So uh, we'll get into. His little bit, I think, now. I don't think there's anything else. Uh, Kieran's saying thank you. You're more than welcome, Kieran. You know, it's worth a mention. You did a cracking job. <coughs> Jezza, can someone pop a link into AVC's channel? I'm not sure. 
if Kieran can do it. If you can do it, Kieran, pop it in. I'm not sure if you're allowed to put a link in. If you can, just try. I'm more than happy for you to. Enough of my voice, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> so, you were going to say, so trading standards, they popped in to see you. And well, from day one, I invited them through the door accidentally. Did you? Um, so he's always knew about the shop existing, I suppose. That could be uh, some reason. Um, purely, I, I got. I got, I got asked by me, my girlfriend's dad whether or not I'd need a license. Because obviously coming from scaffolding into retail, I had no idea. Mm. He was in the catering business and he did need a license. So I phoned the local council and they put me through to, I didn't know at the time, but trading standards. And then obviously they came in the shop and started to inform me on the changes from, I think it was chip to CLP and the... Uh, importation because obviously back in 2014, 90% of the products that I stocked was imported direct by myself from China. As I'm, I'm sure yourself, you was probably doing the same, but you still do now because you buy obviously direct. But for us ourselves, we buy a lot now from the UK and we can then pass the book on to them regarding any leakage. Um, but yeah, he was basically saying that the I needed to get the C certificates. So the C mark representing the yes, of I've had, to, I've had to do that as well. Um, I had to, yeah, I had to go away and come back with a big file full of these certificates that I managed to get, and then it became pretty much a, a yearly thing we'd maybe see. Um, but they apparently can't just come in without a reason. So there's always the reason why they can't turn up. One right. for a, a G go spinner battery in the borough. Um, that led that actually led to the the start of the the food imitations regulations mentionings about food that was meant to look you know like the, the do ice cream cones and things like that liquid packaging yeah that's yeah. where it sprouted from um, ah. and we lost a little bit of stock um, but he took it in the end because my business partner went to we was going all the way through to court because we was. We had a feeling that we might have got away with the food mutations and fight it, and it actually turned out that it couldn't do us with the food mutations, but it would have got down on the import duty. Uh, sorry, the import um, import details. So there were US right. uses, yeah, um, and obviously it was imported into Europe, and then right. So this is where we learned about the uh, importation of products into the European market, and obviously everything needed to have an import detail on it. So obviously for legal issues again. You can point the finger and say you're at fault. Um, so then we learned about another thing, which was obviously the import details that that took from us. And yeah, we've had another few dealings with them. Um, but it's more, we treat it as obviously knowledge, which is good because yeah. we then yeah. link this knowledge back into the industry through suppliers and stuff. So someone will take it on board. Um, <clears throat> Some don't, unless they've had more than a couple of people say it, which can be frustrating. Um, I did have them come and see me, actually, and they, they, you're right. They wanted to see test certificates, uh, CE certificates, and also a test certificate for that item as well. Yeah, so the, the CE certificate is, I think it's a non-destructive, destructive test. So it tells you what the components are as a whole and what mm. the components are like individually, down to what paint, etc. is on such yeah. products. But they're um, not. I mean, I think in depth. they're they're not. Sorry, to interrupt. They're they're not. We all. A lot of people might think, oh, yeah, trade and standards come. It's not that bad, and they're there to help us in a way as well. It's not always, you know, a punishment. It comes from some point of view, like for a retail shop, um, we get to pass the book quite a bit. Because obviously we're relying, obviously we have due diligence to look for, but yeah. obviously if we're buying from a UK company, then obviously we can say, well, this is what they've told us, and mm. yeah, we yeah. can pass that off a little bit. You um, can pass it off if you. It's the importer if, that, that the buck stops with him, really, doesn't it? Unless we already know. So if we had the deal, and so if we knew that import details, say for instance, needs to be on products, mm. and we've already had an incident from that. Then obviously we need, if we get more products found with that, you know, if you came in in twelve months' time, for instance, and seeing that we had products mm. that didn't have it on, 
Yeah, and obviously um, we're liable because we already knew better. We've already known. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which can be frustrating because sometimes we purchase from some companies and it may not have, depending on the brand, you know, a fire, Vapresso, in a kind of pretty much solid. Yeah. Um, but some of the other brands can be, you know, difficult sometimes. Well, some are new as well, and they don't even know the laws. And, and I've had Chinese companies say to me, what do we have to do? And I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I know some of the rules, but I don't feel... Um, it's, it's new quali- it, so it's yeah. created. I don't feel it, qualified it's to tell them. taking time, things mm. to, Yeah, yeah. To find out. Um, which can be frustrating quite a lot of the time. Yeah. Any Anyone in chat got any questions for Joe? Just start the question with Joe in capital letters, and then it, we'll we'll see it quicker. Um, I, I think you know we'll we'll perhaps come back to that if anyone's got anything that they'd like to know on that one. There's there's another little story about e liquid as well, which we'll get to in a minute. I do just want to make a. I don't often get a request, but I do. One of my long-term customers and and in fact he's a spanner daniel um his sister had a car accident yesterday and she had the same operation as me in in her neck and she's had a bit of a stay in hospital so i just wanted to put this little note up for lorna from daniel um you're the best sister a brother could wish for this is just another challenge for you to overcome and you will Stay strong. I love you so much. I'm incredibly proud of you, Daniel. Where's some kisses? So get well soon, Lorna. Um, I hope everything's okay. Your back didn't get interrupted in, and I'm just trying to find the bit to get rid of that note. There we are, gone. So yeah, get well. I hope you do. Terrible things that you know that who knows what what's going to happen when you wake up in the morning. But I don't know the, the ins and outs of the accident, but I did just say to Daniel, you know, I'd put that up for him. So, okay. Um, we had some sad things tonight, and we were some <laughs> sad oh, news. And, yeah. and some, mind you, whatever day we've had, Boris Johnson's had a worse one. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. There's, there's some people out in America at the minute that are having a bit of a bad one by the looks of it right now. I think that's, right now, I think it's the hearing of the the decision for the New Jersey ban, yeah, which yeah. is a bit, of a bit of a concern, but we'll see what the outcome is. I don't know. I've not had no updates recently. So. Mm, yeah, all these things that happen. So your e-liquid story, that, this was recent, wasn't it? Um, trading standards came mm-hmm. to see you? Yeah. yeah, the most recent visit from the trading standards. Um, they're saying it's a smoking sensation clinic in the borough that's requested funding from, I think it's the Department of Health that funds them, um, to try and survey the, the shops in the borough to see if they're selling clean liquid that they can refer customers to, um, or not customers, should we say patients to. Um, right. So the train stands have been between, it was April and May, they came in plain clothed or, or whatever you want to say, uh, purchased liquid or Pacific flavour, um, from a TPD compliant line, um, tested them, found something in them. Um, so they they came in, tar- are they targeted a flavour, you think? It, uh, it, if you're looking for anything that's in a liquid that's potentially harmful, the easiest thing to look for is probably dicebutyl, and that's in obviously custard. So yeah, yeah. this brand had a couple of good custards in it, 18 milligrams it went up to. Um, we did question it when we first stocked the product and the, the, the manufacturer did say that he kept it within the parameters, really tight within the parameters every time they made it because they yeah. said it's like, it's the best crust I've ever tasted TBD compliant wise. Right. Um, but obviously that led to a lie that, well, we don't know, we don't know exactly what's happened um, as of yet, but it's led to us discontinuing the brand and now it was obviously a TBD compliant product that's failed. So now the concern to us is uh, basically we've put a thing in place now that we won't stock a single product unless it can provide us with an emissions test. <clears throat> so regardless of what it is, if it's for inhalation, we want to know what is being inhaled, not what's in the bottle prior to inhalation. Yeah, um, yeah. Basically, because to do it for TP compliant bottles and other brands in the industry do it across the board, it 
does cost more money. Mm. Um, but it, it's led to us now that you know if we if we get we don't want that to reflect on us. If that was a smoking cessation clinic, yeah, and that for instance damaged our chance to have referrals from them, mm. we may have lost quite a bit of money because of that. Yeah, and obviously yeah. we don't want anything else to be you know any anything even though we can pass the book to the manufacturer is still us getting caught up in it, so it might reflect bad on us as a, as a business. So. In a respect, you you can only do what you can do. If you say if you get a product that has passed tests and of a standard, and you say, "Well, that's fine. It's passed, and we'll stock that." It shouldn't really deviate from there. Yeah. So it's a bit like yeah. in hardware. Perhaps you submit a tank for testing that with its fat coil in, it's two mil, but the other coil that comes, and that's one they send it off to, the other coil that comes with it is a little skinny coil that brings it up to three and a half mil. <laughs> and, and that sort of thing goes on as well. And I think it's it's human nature for us to push the boundaries, isn't it? You know, we all... I think, yeah, push, push the boundaries with stuff and uh, glass extensions and things like that for very products or another... I believe that certain products that we class as e-cigarettes at the minute should fall under the general product safety bracket where the short fill lies. That's something that there is a percentage, I think, still out there that believes that the short fill is unregulated. Hmm. It's yeah. just not, nothing regulated in Europe. Yeah. And I have a safety net that's the general product safety regulations and that means it encapsulates anything that doesn't fall under a specific category. Hmm. Um, it's e-liquids without nicotine in um, and that clearly states about safe products must be safe to sell and obviously the the, the end use is inhalation so is it safe to inhale and if you've not done an emissions test you can't say it's safe I suppose we've seen some companies that will say well all these ingredients we know that have, that have passed but in that combination heat applied does it we don't know unless you test it so mm. yeah it's one of them um we're losing, we're going to have to lose a percentage of the brands we start. Right. They're not able to produce certain things. Uh, and but I, think, I think that's good that you've you've got that, um, what's the word, what's the right word? That sort of the, the sensible outlook on it, you know, it's, that's not the word. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That you, you care that, you know. Yeah, that, well, the reason, you know, one of the reasons to set the shop up was because I believed I could offer a better service to the customers mm. at the shops. Not in the borough to here because I'm not originally from the local area. So obviously, yeah. where I was from, it was different. But the you know the, the knowledge about certain things. If you've got an interest of it, real deep interest, and you do want to, yeah, you know, you can offer a better, better service to somebody, and it's all about really customer service, helping people stop smoking, and mm. being a, a little hub of knowledge that people can come in and you know share that knowledge with other yeah. customers, and yeah. you know. It, it's more of a helping point rather than a business. We yeah. obviously need to make money. But, <laughs> well, on that you know. point, Iggy Mitchell, you might not want to answer this question. Joe, can you make a decent living from owning and running a vape shop? Uh, yes, and <laughs> it depends what you want to do, I suppose. If you want to work in that vape shop forever, um, yes, you could earn a very nice wage and you could do whatever, but... If you want to invest into anything else, then it's down to what you do with your money, I suppose. You can yeah, keep I mean, it and invest, but you I think can spend like it any on. other business. Can you make money out of hairdressing? Yes, you can if you're good at it uh, and you care about <laughs> yeah. your customer's hair. We've, we've been going for five years, so we've, mm. we've, we must be doing something right. Um, but I obviously don't know the comparison for other business. I don't know whether I <clears throat> We make good money or bad money because I can't compare it to another bait shop because I don't. You make a living, no? Yeah, we make a living. Yeah, <laughs> just about. <laughs> Jezza has put a comment up here. Uh, I see the one about the CBD. Yeah, this is for both of us. Uh, put it on the screen now. The last vape show I went to, the venue was jam full of CBD juice vendors with cannabis leaf logos everywhere. Is this the way juice marketing is going? And what do you think about CBD? Very good point, Jez. I like that one. Um, I get emails in abundance every day. CBD this, CBD that, CBD the other. It to it's me, the next, the next gold rush. 
Yeah, it's and I think the profit margins are quite high in CBD juice, etc. Again, uh, there was a time, I'll, I'll be honest, I stocked it for a little while, and I stocked it at a time when, pre my neck operation, I I couldn't even sleep, and I had, I don't know if anyone else has had this, jump like jumpy leg syndrome, and you're laying in bed, and you're, you're just about to nod off, and then your legs, are, your legs are twitching and jumping, and I'll tell you, you could, you could rip the curtains off the window, it, it gets you so angry. And and I tried it to, to help with that, and I, I think it did help. But do I think that's the way forward and the future of what we should be doing? No, I don't. And yeah. again, no, I I, go on. What's your, what's your? I don't think it should be bandied around like some. It's almost like you know where did this THC come from? It, you know what I mean? It, it's like the step to it, possibly, and. It, it, does, it doesn't get you high, it's got the high taken out of it, but it's, you know, there's an inference that medically it will help you in some way for something. For some it will, for some it won't. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe... Uh, it's, I believe that in the product, I believe it's got benefits to it. Mm. Um, and obviously, again, there's, a, there's money in it, there's a market that's going to, obviously there's a lot of money in it, so people are going to target it, and there's ways to target it, whether it's health well, and well-being, or you can target the, the cannabis smokers, we could say, you know, by the, the cannabis leaves, and it attracts certain certain people by the, 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 the look of them, so the branding will appeal to some. And obviously that's appealing to the market they want to target, not appealing to the person who wants to use it for health and well-being or buy as a supplement and use it in a way that isn't used like, you know, used as a dietary supplement. Mm. Um, some people use it as a placebo to, to stop smoking and actual cannabis. We see our customers coming in um, and asking, you know, saying that they want to stop smoking cannabis, but they want to do it by using the vape. So it's like we understand they're taking nicotine at the same time. Um, so having a different flavour in there sometimes, as we've seen work for some, like placebo, um, but not necessarily the CBD itself. Um, Actually, I don't, yeah, we, I don't know if we should be saying that word, should we? A lot of people call it subida, <laughs> so they don't get in trouble. Perhaps we all do. <laughs> Otherwise, this video will get taken down. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of them. If you look on the YouTube, there's a lot of videos, obviously, about these products. So I'm guessing, you know, we're not marketing them in any way I suppose by mentioning them um. no it's not but I, I get what uh, Jezza says you know and I, I went to Expo last year and it was it was everywhere um, even at that one and I, and I thought then really uh, again we're talking about boundaries we're pushing boundaries all the time aren't we and put, it's, pushing it's, it's, it's a hemp leaf the hemp plant and the cannabis plant near enough look the same so yeah. the leaves almost identical so it's mm. hard to say not use it it's mm. a cannabis leaf because you can say it's a hemp leaf yeah, yeah. but use i understand that that market and sometimes doesn't need to be used really to sell yeah. the products yeah. um i think we'll see it's a it's a really big conversation to be it, 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 it probably it gone for about an hour time. just on that one but you know i think i think we're all got mixed views on that i mean live and let live is my sort of ethos in life i just think you know there's too much of you must not do this and you must not do that but you know at the same time we have to be responsible as well joe um, curly chew um curly chew joe i've i've always vaped custard and bought lots of different brands which one failed mate he wants to know which which Custard trading standards took away, which failed. Oh, I can't say. <laughs> no. <laughs> they are going to publicise this apparently, and the brand will be named. Um, oh, he did mention that there's 14 shops or 14 premises in the borough that he's visited, and every single place has got a problem. He didn't specify what the problems were. Um, but I would probably say there's many customers out there that might have nasties we could say them. We all know that they're not going to do the harm that is been led to believe. Um, Which well, is I think exactly what Iggy, Iggy has just Iggy said. Iggy, Iggy Mitchell has just said diacetyl uh, 750 times higher in cigarettes. So Yeah, 
it's pretty, it's he's been out there for a while. Apparently, he, well, this the report the doctor Fasolinos, I think it was, about there. Um, something about you had to make thirty mil a day for four years of heavy containing diacetyl liquid uh, to get the equivalent that you would from one cigarette. Mm. So mm. apparently, everyone in the world should have popcorn on by now. You smoke cigarettes, but <laughs> apparently, <laughs> we're yeah. not. Only the people that worked in the in the factories making popcorn got that, didn't they? <clears throat> Daniel, uh, you're, you're, you're Daniel. Uh, Lawler, Joe is the font of knowledge for all things vape related and always backs his arguments with facts. Proper hub of knowledge. There you go. There's, a, there's, there's someone tipping his cap to you, saying well done. Um, Danny B, what kind of, he didn't address this to anyone, what kind of juice is best for Origin Q? <coughs> oh, the Orion Q. I reckon uh, Swedish fish three milligram isn't doing it for me. Swedish fish from uh, Candy King. I think that liquid might be. Are you reading down the lines? Am I that far behind? I'm not 100. I can see Danny B's comment, and I can see the that bit. Right. I mean, I. Uh, I, I wouldn't know the answer to that question. It's, uh, it is. I think that the, the liquid is used. If it's the Candy King, we was, we've seen it quite heavy on the lock coils and the Orion Q, the pods, original pods, we have a lot of complaints sometimes with them. Mm -hmm. um, but they have just, no, they haven't for the Q. You can't use it for the Q. That's a bit of a, a bummer. I've just realised the new pods that have done for the coils is only for the, the Orion, what is it called? On the original one now. There's the Plus and the, oh, the DNA 75 version of it. No, the DNA Gold version of it, should be saying. <laughs> Get it right. I can't, I can't remember. <clears throat> and Kieran has put restless leg syndrome, also called Willis Ekbom disease. <laughs> Is that? I know some, some some people say take uh, tonic water, don't they? It helps. It's uh, I can't remember what it is in tonic water now, which helps. But um, a single malt whiskey tends to help as well. <laughs> Just switches <laughs> something off. Merck, <laughs> um, won't somebody please think of the children? Think of the children. Why, why think of the children. children? The liquid branding? Are you going that way? Oh, oh I see just... the brand with right. candy, etc. Perhaps. Um... Yeah, it's Candy King. Yeah, so the yeah. Candy King, we we seen it quite heavy on coils. Um, was one of the reasons we never we found that out in when it was in the TPD compliant ten mils in the five packs. Um, we had a lot of a lot of customers coming back with a lot of complaints, so we've never. We don't stock any more Candy King liquids at all, due to that reason, really. <laughs> right. Which is, we don't want too many complaints coming back from customers. That's something else. We try and stock products in a way that we purchase them. So that would be so obviously it, sweetener would do that, wouldn't it? But I mean, again, we could to, we could talk about is it right for a vaping e-liquid brand to be called Candy Anything? You know, because yeah, ban banning the flavors is ridiculous. Uh, I think we'd all agree with that, but. To call something, well, let's pick one, uh, rhubarb custard. That is rhubarb custard. It's not appealing to kids saying it's a candy something. Do you know what I mean? And I just think if we weren't in the vaping industry quite so stupid and we didn't push boundaries quite so hard, I think we'd get an easier time, personally. Yeah, I think the branding, obviously people say branding is obviously the same ability, but... It's very rare we get customers coming in the shop and going, I like the look of that, I want that, without ever smelling it or without ever tasting it. Because, yeah, the bottom. You know, so so it, irrelevant, technically, the brand does help. Mm. And it does definitely give it that, depending on what luxury feel, if you're going for a luxury brand or whatever. Um, but it, the content of the bottle is the most important part. So if you've got a good liquid, you can put it in quite a plain packaging and you still quite sell quite a lot of it. It's good flavour. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I've got some. Did I bring them up? Yeah, I've got some new juices sent to me. That one's quite a quite a nice label. Or, but I mean, that is called fizzle. It's actually a shandy. But 
Look how plain that is. It's plain. It doesn't have to be. You know, I mean, there's there's another one. Five. One, one thing we've done with uh, an old player, see what I mean? We see some brands do the company with their label. Some like using certain bottle machines. So if you get a discrepancy in your bottle and you can clearly see it on the shelf, so yeah. it becomes sometimes, you know, unless you're accurate. Right. It looks good for you the packaging, but if it's a customer looking at them, if they see the oh, that's full one. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like a bottle, you know, you can't necessarily see the Who's pinched them out of that one? <laughs> Um, I think there's a lot of this just going on about cause Jez says that um, yeah, let's put Jez's up again he's um, he said some good stuff in my opinion the cannabis leaf promotional approach gives the anti-vaping lobby a big stick to beat us with uh, certainly media outlets don't need any help when hammering dangerous vaping now that's pretty much what I said as well Jez that you know if we if we didn't push those boundaries so I mean, what was that um who made that thing the the watch that was a a vape as well i didn't like that either oh. and it, was it you will yeah well there's two apparently there's, there's you well and there's another one that's yeah I didn't, I didn't like that either and, and a lot of people said well kids don't wear watches these days but i remember when i was a kid if it's like gadgety you'd you'd want it wouldn't you it's like a gadget you can show your mates and I, I still say that I think that's right on the borderline of of really. It's a tricky one again. It's because it's a new industry. You know, we we are going to bring unfortunately the youth into it at some point. You know, children, kids, teenagers get offered cigarettes. I did. Um, I'm guessing you did if you was a smoker, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was I was, I was smoking from the age of twelve. I think. Um, you want know. to prevent that from happening. But we know, with it being a new product on the market, it's you're going to affect that, and obviously it gets highlighted quite a lot because mm. of the the but press kid, we get around will, the industry. They'll try anything; it doesn't matter what it is. But it's you know they will try it if you, and especially if you tell them not to do something, they'll definitely try it. <laughs> but yeah, it's, I, I just it's think if is. you if you don't make it glamorous, like I mean, you could all argue that Bantam Box is glamorous because it's gadgety and that's probably what i like about it as well but that isn't really glamorous is it that's more functional i would have said it's do you think though that some kids vape because of the vapor that comes out of it possibly so the actual look of the product could be a material to yeah. what it is rather than getting the yeah possibly it, so although Even we go hurt. look at these fancy looking colors this looks like this and you might say smart products for instance may you know edge on that with the colors and the patterns and the styles uh but at the end of the day, it, it, it's we see a lot. Of, you know, when we have seen underage vapors on the street or whatever, you see them with smock pens or things like that. The like a vape pen twenty two from a garage for nineteen ninety nine type of product. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's rare that you see vapor younger vapors with anything that's. You know, we we have customers that come in that we serve parents of you know vapors. And we serve the parent, and the parent's completely open to what they're doing. I, I, and I are. think I think that's fair enough, especially so all parents try to do what's best for their kids, don't they? And if, if that's their decision, so, uh, uh, that's their decision. And some that. children need, if they weren't vape, they would be smoking. And probably the parents think, well, I'd rather see him vape than I would smoke. So let's let's let him do that and. I mean, so I've got two children myself, so as a, as a parent, I would rather have my child if there was going to, I'd rather not do any, but if they yeah. are going to go down, the lesser of two evils is something that obviously I would, would rather have them do then. How old are your two children? Uh, ten and four. Ten and four. No, you've got, you've got all, all the trouble to come. <laughs> like, boys or girls or one yeah. of each? Are they uh, boys or girls? Oh, one of each. Sorry, one of each. The boys, the old. Yeah, so girls, got, the youngest. So you got one, one wedding to pay for. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. one. again. Uh, can anyone recommend a good coffee vape that doesn't gum up your coils? Seen someone, hold on. Where are we up to on here? Someone mentioned about buying a pod system. Well, are we? Am I skipping the queue? 
Probably, because I'm always behind. <laughs> Where are we up to? Uh, Most sure. Oh, miles behind. Yeah, you're bound to be in front of me. <laughs> I don't know. Are you right at the end, nearly? No. Um, no, don't be ridiculous. This is my show. This is the Norfolk Factor. I'm always behind. <laughs> um, a micro cold brew vanilla bean, which turns coils black after one day's use. Please help. My morning vote is good... I've never really been a coffee style vapor. It's never been a flavor. I think I probably would if I found a nice one, but I've never it's really found nice. the thing we're going to discover yet. We've not asked any of these questions, but we've got a couple of good coffee vapes, but the question we've not asked about is the emissions yet. So if that liquid's making the coil turn quite quick, one question would be Sweetener. For me is well potentially but with coffee flavorings i'm wondering whether or not some companies use like um a bit like net tobaccos yeah you know whether yeah net natural, natural ex extracted you know. yeah if that's the case quinine we need Mike. that on the mission test to see whether or not that it is good or bad because it could be one of the reasons it might not be and then obviously the, the build upon the coil is another concern potential build-up of coils and yeah. releasing things quite fast. It's, I personally don't like to sell liquids that do that. Unfortunately, some places you can't get away from it, I suppose. Mm. Pav. Like, As if ooh, adults... the, the worst it is. <laughs> As if adults don't like candy. That's not my yeah. point, Pav. I know we like candy. I know we like custards. I know we like mango, peach and papaya. We like... Yes, adults like them. Uh, I do, but it's this, it's the branding. You knew what I meant, Pav. Don't don't be um, <laughs> devil's avocado. <laughs> um, Iggy again. Let's put Iggy's address to both of us, Joe and Mark. I'm going to buy one of these tomorrow. Smock Trinity Alpha or Ryan Q or Horizon Tech Magico Pod. Please advise. Well. I'll have my little bit, and then probably Joe's more qualified to tell you about this than me. The well, my, the Magico well, apparently has got a cracking little coil. Um, I think it was, yeah, it was Daniel telling me about that. And what have I done with it? What have I done with it? What have I done with it? The, do you mean the Smock? Oh, the Smock Trinity Alpha. Right, okay, that's not the one I thought you meant. Um, I don't know anything about that or the Orion Q. Never tried either. So well, I've not tried the the Horizon Tech one you talked about. I've not tried that. So. Apparently, the coils are really, really good on the Magico. So okay, yeah. Apparently, the, the coils on the Verge Ally are really, really good. And apparently, them coils are now being put into the new Orchid pods and something else. I believe um, they're very good. Uh, the Trinity Alpha, we don't stock, so basically we've we don't stock any smoke products by the coils. Um, don't you? Blast, we we did do. Um, I, th I thought she meant that one, the smock. Ah, uh, that's the RPS. The that that is good. That is good. And we yeah, the, it led us some products. I suppose we. I've done that a lot in the past, and when I was like you with the pro uh, provoke uh, things and that, Kanga was massive, wasn't it? And I never stocked a Kanga product because I thought they just there was better out there. There was a, and I just thought I could have made could have stacked the shelves high, sold them cheap, and made a fortune on Kanga, but I didn't, and I didn't because I didn't we, think that. Rate something. <laughs> Obviously, we look at is yeah, yeah, yeah. Not kind of high return rate. Uh, e Leaf did as well for us. We we found that we do sell some E Leaf products. Um, certain of their products have happened to be. I think one of their products we sold. Every single one of them came back with a fault, which was a bit of a. Um, but the smart reason was the alien faults. Um, right. Yeah. We had a point where a battery vented inside the mod. Did you? And it, it seemed to as if some of the faults had constant drains. <laughs> So you'd leave batteries and it'd discharge them completely. Um, so we'd have customers coming in and we'd be like, the mod's not turned on and we'd check the batteries and they'd be near enough empty. Right. So there's a drain 
and yeah, that drain yeah. on once on one occasion was to drain the battery off too fast and it's vented the battery mm. that was enough for us to say that that's as close as catastrophic failure you want to get especially yeah. if that was just sat on the side in someone's house whilst it happened you know yeah. and that we it, it was like okay now we've got a problem our smoke producing over quality and it yeah. led to us yeah. to go well the, the amount of design and new product was bringing out sometimes the quality control would drop and we've managed for the last two years I'd say without them yeah yeah so there is alternatives out there some of the products are good the Trinity Alpha uh, is a good vape from the, the Nord coil I think it takes um, the air flows from the bottom and the coil generally you'll get condensation or potential liquid so any pod system that takes its air from the bottom generally we'll get a leakage situation in the base so you're obviously going to have to make sure you keep on top of cleaning it maintenance because if it gets in there it'll kill it off yeah um a bit like the nord pods we said we've never stopped the nord purely because we've seen the airflow at the bottom and we have seen a trend of customers that have purchased them from other places and they've started to break because of that so we didn't want that coming back to us so we thought well if we can maybe see if it's a problem that could occur that one and then have a look at the pairs. That's yeah. the Nord. Let's have a look. That's been sitting on my desk for weeks. Uh, Danny yeah. B has just asked where your shop is. It's liver. Is is it Prescott? Prescott Mercy. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's L thirty four, so it's technically a little It's juice in there. Is it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Still liquid in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So the. Some things we see problems occur before it happens, and we might not have a lot of that. Um, as for the, what was the other product that was looking at, the Ryan Q. The, the, the Did you say where your shop was? Well, sorry, I, I wasn't listening to the, the answer. Is, uh, if you go Google Vape Shack Prescott and it'll come up with uh, Google Maps, <laughs> probably Prescott. the easiest way. Um, to, but yeah, it's just outside of Liverpool, about six miles. You got any competition your way? I don't know of any other vape shops in Liverpool. <laughs> I'm being cheeky. <laughs> the competition's obviously good. You know, it, yeah. it, it, it's one of them. it allows shops to see the difference. So if you've got a shop in the area that relies on selling everything cheap because they can't offer the knowledge because the staff that they've got obviously are, they don't have invested interests. Unfortunately, we work here. It's fortunate. It's a good job, but at the same time, obviously. Our our knowledge of to help the customers is something that customers come for. Yes. So obviously, if we yeah. wasn't here and it was just somebody who was just nine pound an hour or whatever, eight pound an hour or whatever. I think, whatever, the I think that, I mean, there are good vape shops and bad, aren't there? And I've been in some, and I've just I've listened to the sales pitch, and I've just stood there the, in disbelief. The the customers look better, so that's that's always a good yeah. <laughs> good thing. I but, um, but uh, if, a, if the shop's letting people, even if it's a good or a bad shop, you could say if they've stopped people smoking, then I suppose, you know, they've done something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they are contributing. You know, some, some businesses obviously rely heavily on making profit um, and, and nothing else, I suppose. I think I think Iggy has asked the same question again. Um, Merck. Uh, what's, I can't quite. I've read through your comment, Merck. As a while I was listening, whether or not she should purchase one of them pods um, with the Q, the Q kit as the pod problem. We have seen some of the pods are burning out quite fast. From what the I've pod. heard, the Magico is good. So my, I believe that's going to be the best bet. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think I would give that one a, a go um, if it was me. But that's if it's no good, don't don't. Put it in the post to me. <laughs> Mergus Pell, I think Mike's Mike Vape said it all needs to be only in professional vape establishments, none in drugstores, service stations, supermarkets. Keep it in places that ID and have good advice. Yeah, and that's that is a relevant point. I mean, we had the thing recently with was it Argos that was selling. The wrong battery. Yeah, selling I think they've got some smart products in there. Yeah, but they were selling. People were buying a mod, and they were selling the wrong eighteen six fifty batteries, and they were all because of lack of knowledge. They were putting like torch batteries in the in the vape mods, and Argos didn't know any better. 
You know, so that yeah. really reinforces yeah. Merck's comment, doesn't it? The, the, yeah, the, the, it's a it's touchy subject, I suppose, because obviously I'm a brick and mortar 99% at the minute, and obviously you're an online shop. From my standpoint with that question is, yeah, I believe it should be. <clears throat> I, I like I was saying on the phone to the other night, the vape shops will have created the majority of the industry, I reckon, that mm. the created the... You know, the yeah, majority yeah. Of I mean, there are, there are, as I say, good vape shops, which you obviously are, there are bad as well. There are good online and there are bad. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I've also, I mean, the many a time I've been on the phone to a customer for an hour trying to help and advise them and, and instruct them, but you can't beat the man right in front of you. <laughs> Sometimes you need to, you, it's frustrating, yeah. you need to see that product to be able mm. to diagnose the issue. Or... Yeah. John yeah. Nash, uh, John, I think you uh, sorry, I cut across you there, I do apologise. Uh, having, John, having spinal fusion on Friday afternoon, nerves kicking in, so won't be around for a few weeks. Well, I had, that is the exact operation I had, John, um, so don't, uh, I'm going to, I wouldn't like to say don't worry, because it is worrying, um, but yeah, they, it's this side, they, I don't think you can see the scar anymore, they basically cut your throat and moved my voice box to one side and went in through the front. But they're, they're very, very clever, and I felt immediately better. So hopefully you will too. So good luck with that. Um, that's killed the conversation, isn't it? <laughs> uh, coffee. Yeah, I mean, it was a funny operation. I was really worried about it, and but literally from waking up in recovery i felt so much better immediately um joe joe here we go <laughs> Cheers again. stop frightening me about emissions from my coils i need a fag now <laughs> get me coat <laughs> yeah there's, 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 there's potential there's potential things that could be said to certain people that could maybe sway certain things to happen in the industry that we all wouldn't want to happen as a vape shop. I'm not going to mention them because obviously it's online video and it, it could. I don't know if it could, but there is certain things, you know, that I believe coils that are burning out effectively when they get into the point of when you say to a customer, you know, when, when do they need to change the coil? Well, well, some people, you know, it's when it tastes, when it tastes funny. So the problem is, is we've seen that the taste change is so gradual that the customer sometimes will not notice mm. until it's very gone. Like if we were to try it, they'd be like, oh, that's horrible. Yeah. But the customer doesn't know. Yeah. So at what point, you know, does, does things potentially get released that we shouldn't want to breathe in? We don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a holiday recently and I had... Um, in fact, it was this. It was the crossbow inside here. I had it all week on holiday, and I used this probably more than, well, I did, more than anything. I then used it for four or five days when I got back, and I th and I thought, you know when you think, that's just not vaping this up, and I thought, oh, it needs a clean. Even I was disgusted, and I think some types of RTA or whatever or and juice combination they will gunk up quicker than others and I was using tobacco in here um, but it really was quite foul and but normally I, I I look at a week and I like to re-wick in a week and very often I'll chuck a new coil in as well because a coil never seems you can dry burn it you can blow all the crud off it never seems to have that zest that a brand new coil has and for what they cost bung another coil in and i don't know how you th we don't know exactly that dry burning i mean the coils aren't burning like a red white glow when they're you know when they're in the function yeah. and that's when potentially things will come off a coil i think i'm not a scientist i don't profess to be but i'm a common sensist <laughs> yeah, the combustion part once it releases it's once it gets to its combustible temperature yeah um different this is again it's a mission this is why we tell we're telling some of your liquid companies even though you've got an msds report that'll tell us the contents of the bottle it doesn't tell us 
what happens when he's applied and does things change because unless you've done that test mm. you're never going to know and yeah. It's, yeah, unfortunately it's a cost obviously and we, we understand it's a cost but this <coughs> company's doing it and if that's you know you're selling a product for inhalation mm. so it should really Salford, he's been quiet, but he's come up with a comment. There was a question, yeah, there was a question I was going to say that. Mark, so, Joe, what's happening in the USA? Has it affected your business because of how it's been put across by the media? It definitely has. Um, whether, at the minute, my w- frustrating time for me, my website should have been upgraded by now, and it hasn't been, and I'm aware it can be clunky and slow. Partly that may be affecting my business and partly I've had a week where the business was shut may be affecting my business. But definitely affecting your business, that one. <laughs> yeah, well that sure. did. When it, but when you reopen, you get a little burst where yeah. people have been waiting to buy yeah. off you. But today, for example, for me was quiet. Um, and I also know from people... Like when I go out and about, the people that know me, oh, this old vaping lark, that's killing. Do you know what I mean? And you get all the comments, and you find yourself shooting them down and saying, "No, do you actually know what you know? Why they're coming out with these things?" And no, but they just hear the headline, and that's the problem. That is the problem. Yeah, from our point of view, I'd say not really felt it as much. We've had customers question things and ask us questions regarding it. And obviously yeah. we've told, you know, the, the, the deaths are different to what potentially some of the reasons of the bans and flavour bans and things are going to be in occurrence. But the, the, the deaths is obviously the big one. And obviously that's hopefully a lot of people are aware of why that happened. And, you know, if you put olive oil in your tank and vape that, you know, it's probably going to kill you. So if you yeah. vaporise, you vaporise a lot of things, but if you vaporise the right things, you know, we won't have a problem. But if we vaporise the wrong things, we do have a problem. And that's what's happened is to vaporise the wrong thing, I suppose. And on that on that point as well, brand new tanks, wash them before you use them. I had... Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I wasn't going to tell you, but I'm going to tell you, as a as a Creus, OBS Creus tank, ages ago, I was about to do the review, I was setting up a new one, and in fact I did do the review, and I unboxed it, I used it, I didn't clean it as I normally would my own stuff, because I wanted to show it coming out of the box, and when I finished that review, I honestly didn't know what end it was going to come out of next, I was violently sick, um and it was oil in that tank and honestly is it, it just my body re- like rejected everything and i've never had it before or since but so that just goes to show you what oil contaminants in your tank can do yeah so, again, again these products that products that are manufactured obviously for e-liquids to go in should be made in the same environments liquid e liquids made in. and we do see you know we have seen footage of the factories out in china and from what you see on the videos it is quite cleanly in in obviously the, the aspire and you know the big brands they're mm. all uh, they're, they're all good and all clean but you know and i think most are to be fair but and even obs were you know i'm not going to yeah, tell but everyone OBS back when if it was quite a while ago i'm guessing obs was still a well, Still, do you remember they bought out the Creus, the Creus version 1B or something, then the Creus 2, all in about the space of four months. You know, so yeah, they, they opened the uh, they opened the holes for the coil the first time, made the holes bigger. And then they did something else, and I can't remember what it was. But basically, they, I mean, as a stockist, it was a nightmare. You know, you buy three or four hundred of them, there's no, no way of testing going on to just uh, juice it on yeah. the fault. Oh, they found a fault. We'll change that. And then you get all the emails. Have you got version 1 or version 2? And you think, well, I've yeah. got version 1 and I've got like 300 of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, Dan- that, that window was coming into play. When you were talking about the windows, getting rid of that stock in that time, I suppose, mm. can be vital. Yeah. Obviously, from the point of view to a customer, obviously, it's not the best. Obviously, a customer walking in one day and purchasing one tank and then the next day, Walking in and a customer being able to buy a new one, a different, yeah. you know, the new model. Yeah. You know, it's something unfortunately happens. And you can't blame the customer for getting the one either. 
you know, it's it's what it is. But uh, Daniel has put the magic over, and it was him who told me about these coils. And Daniel is an experienced folk, but I trust his, his judgment. Um, the Magico has coils that fit the Magico tank and the pod. Uh, it's a really good 1.80 mouth to lung coil and a 0.120 mesh coil, both with their bamboo wicking. However, no wattage control on the pod. So thanks, Daniel. If that helps, who was it? Who was it? Iggy? Was it Iggy? Who was that asking? I can't remember. I think so. Uh, thanks, Pav. No smock <laughs> quality control from smock. Surely not. <laughs> Um, Daniel, I must be so far behind. I'm sorry, folks, but there's a lot of questions, which is good. Um, to add to the Salford question, I know that people see seen me vaping with it, with all the news in America and decimals, which is apparently vaping rated. How will this affect the effect of the UK? Um, Oh, What's happening up in America now? You mean? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's a similar, similar question, really. And I, or do you mean the effect of more to so, us? Uh, one, one of the things I believe that could be a concern is the the publicisation of what's happened with the testing of the liquids in this borough. And I believe that there may be some others in Britain that have had the same experience. That. With flavour bans in America and they're going on about marketing to children, the real concern is is the ingredients, the flavourings themselves. That's the biggest concern of everything out of what we inhale is is the flavouring ingredient. So, with a lot of bad press now, you know, potentially it could be the headline of fifty shops in Britain, a hundred vape shops in Britain found selling unsafe liquid. You know, that coincides with flavourings in America. It could be something that the UK may look at um, regarding flavours. Definitely going to be in the revisions of the new TPD. I think that everything on the, the emissions tests and to be able to back up for the inhalation part of it. Uh, yeah, I, mean, uh, I think a lot of it. Um, who was it who commented on that? I've gone past it now. Does that not obviously worry of you know the market if it starts to you know? Yeah, that was a year. It was about MSA payments, and basically, yeah, they have. They've spent the income they get from cigarettes that has been so consistent over the years that they spend that money in advance. Well, of course, now with so many vapors, that there's a shortfall, and they've already yep. spent it, and there is a lot of that to it, in my opinion. I don't know if America have the same. Obviously, we have VAT, so obviously 20% is what we pay. And obviously, we import from America, we pay import duty on it. If they don't have that out there, then obviously, over here, we've got 20%. It would incur, obviously, the cost difference. We'd, we'd see that, but they may have to give money to the government to keep them quiet. Yeah, which possibly. Which is a thing. Um, Iggy so wants to know... More, sorry, go on. I was going to say, paying a little bit more for the products better than not having it at all, I suppose. Mm, mm. Um, but then when, where do you stop that Well, once you start this, tax, once you're allowed uh, to be taxed, it, it, it's, it's when does it stop, like you say. Yeah, that's, and our, that's our customers would say, you aren't taxing me, it's a piece of metal that I put my wire in and, uh, and my cotton wool, <laughs> and my, do you know what I mean? And they, they just say, no, you're not taxing that. Um, which I think is why, partly why as well, the vaping industry has boomed so quickly. Uh, Iggy wanted to know if you're referring to your own built coils in an RTA or stock coils. I think when... Um, all coils. Not about the build of... About yeah, yeah, yeah. All coils, I suppose. Mm. Obviously, rebuildable, we get to see the coil. So you can see physically see how bad it is, if it's a dripper or something with an exposed coil, we're looking at it, so you can go, that looks a bit horrible. But with a stock coil, more more chance of happening because you can't really see as much of them inside. So I, was, read, I, was, I was reading, I am I am listening, but I was reading John's comment about his, his back as well. Um, and I, I repeat again, John, really good luck with that op, and I'm sure you, you will be massively better for it. Matt Benson, hello. The emissions thing is one of the reasons I always use TC, temperature control. Yeah, I mean, I don't normally, but I just had, I thought I'd put a stainless steel 
wire in this and I don't know if you can see it there it's in 450 degrees Fahrenheit um, but yeah and I just thought I'd give that a, a go in That's, temp control uh, good, good topic I suppose is the flavourings break down so uh, getting the longest out of your coil temperature control could help because you're not you know if, a, if, a, if, a, if your juice for instance said rhubarb and custard vapes best between 220 and 250 then we know that temperature bracket you're going to get the optimum amount of flavour longevity of the coil we're not overcooking it we're not undercooking it that would be you know temperature is a big factor I believe in breakdown of liquids and temperature control does limit that down to you know it reduces the risk even further I'd say I'd like to see temperature control evolved into a more simpler way yeah, I think I think it, it, like the DNA go. I think that's where they were going for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was a bit. I I never felt like I got what I wanted from temperature control, and I've said this before with wattage mode. I, I like because I mouth to lung more than anything, and I quite like that ramp up, where it it's a bit like smoking, wasn't it? You you draw as you draw as you draw, and you think I've had enough now. And the wattage mode did give me that sort of crescendo of that ramp. And that's probably why I don't normally do it. But I just I thought I'd try it on that, and I'm actually getting on really well with it. So. In theory, the wattage would be the ramp up effectively for your temperature control. Sorry. So effectively, your wattage could be almost like um, how quick you get to the your limit. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it so it, it, it does. 50, it, it, it works. It works. You know, similar. Tenet. But I can't wait. There's too much in here. I'll fog myself out. <laughs> it's only a small room. Daniel, I'm I'm half inclined not to read this, but basically he's saying that you should t check out the our pre-made coils. Um, they stainless steel. No, you won't, you know, guarantee you won't look back on another brand. And he's not on commission. No, he's not. Um, you'd agree with that. You like my coils as well, don't you, Joe? <laughs> yes, we just reordered some more actually. Well, the customers like them. That's the main thing. Yeah. So yeah. The Another, thanks, another thanks, John. Good night. Uh, John's just kicking off to bed um, with his with his painkillers. Uh, Salford Nature Vote the Chris Two Jewel was full of machine oil when when I opened up. Well, there you go. So that was two of us. So I hope you had the sense to clean yours, David, <laughs> like me. <laughs> but um, seen a lot of that. Like, uh, they're definitely cleaning their act up now. The, the, the companies out there they've got a lot better. Um, the more mainstream, anyway. The, there's still some odd ones out there that we, you see and you go, what, what's that? <laughs> it's, it's still good practice though, isn't it? Because, you know, even, yeah, if, uh, even if you buy, and I don't, do I stock any Aspire? I don't think I do. But Aspire, a, a, a well-known and recognised company with proper clean products, even if that is the case, it's good practice still to rinse that out, I believe. And if you've got a Sonic cleaner, better still. But, you know, that that's my opinion. Why risk it if you don't have to? Just you know. In theory, you should be, in theory, the, you should be able to well, a start kit. You'd expect to be able to open up, fill up the liquid and vape. Um, and you'd expect it because it's a coil that's sat inside the tank. The environment that the coil's in, everything's the same cleanliness, I suppose, of, has been followed. And um, Merck is talking about um, dry hits as well that you know and temp control yeah, eliminates like and things and dry it you know, yeah. that's something that you know you're, you're not getting to the temperatures where things i think we was trying to look at we're going to still have a look into the probably glycol i think it was between 280 and 320 degrees mm. that it that it actually combusts so if you make probably glycol at that temperature it will release formaldehyde apparently yeah We'll have a little more look into it and see whether or not people could even achieve to vape at that temperature. I'm not sure, but if it is a vapeable temperature, then we've got to look at the users who use that type of temperature and try and maybe say, maybe not all day, every day. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, and some people do. I don't know what temperature you vape at, but even like... This is two go on, degrees. Ah, uh, right. But if you were in wattage mode, what would you be vaping in on, roughly, on a... This coil I've got in here, probably... About 40 watts, maybe? Yeah, that, that's about where I am. I, I, I don't think I ever... 
go over the six, 60 watts mode. Um, but, so, you know, 200 watt mods and people are on vaping this at 130 watts. and I, It's too hot for me. And, you know... It's too hot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'll put that on the screen, Iggy. New York received 180 million last year, plus also tax. So, yeah, I mean, that, and that's that's a massive incentive, isn't it, for, you know, if they're receiving that money and they start not to receive. They, if they see yeah, that money they, go... They, 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 I think, I think it was last night, night they said something about that when he was doing... I haven't watched watching. that yet. I haven't watched it. Yeah, he, he mentioned about basically giving them money and that'll stop them from, you know... Which is right, you know, yeah. they're after money, and it's unfortunate, you know, that they don't have that tax now for a sin. You know, if it was in the UK, it's a sin tax, it's sugar, it's bad for you, it costs the NHS money. So it's in our incentive, as the, the government's incentive to keep our people healthier, which reduces their spend. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen in, I don't think, any other world, country in the world, I'm not sure. Mm. Um, but that's our saving grace, I suppose, for vaping at the minute. It's the, it's the yeah, we we've got a different setup, haven't we? Um, we yeah, really have, so. uh, I do get a look at that. Obviously, if the bans go through and things do start to be banned, and they're going to obviously turn around and look at the UK and go, "Well, why have you not done it?" And it's like, "Well, we've proven that it's well, we say proven. I believe the test thing that's been done has been on e-cigarettes, not vaporizers, as we see them. You know the, the well, yeah, I mean, that, I think, the I don't know what exact testing they have done, but um, I would have thought that. Well, well, I think a lot of the CBD emission testing will help because they'll realise that you know there's lots and lots of products that are safe to inhale, so I think that reinforces their evidence. Ches has asked a question I don't know the answer to. I don't know if you do. Um, my local vape shop was telling customers TPD2 would be be the end of short fill e-liquid. I tried to research this myself, but couldn't find anything conclusive. Do you think this is true? Yeah, there's no, there's no, um, no information out there. I've watched, um, I can't remember, if I knew the guy's link, I'd, I'd be able to maybe be able to put it up, but there's, there's videos on YouTube. Um, if you Google science and technologies hearings and then put vaping in there or something, it'll probably bring it up. And there was, there was basically the science and technologies were listening to the industry um, all sectors of the industry um, and other people who've done think tanks and people who've done studies with health physicians and everything else. Um, one of the biggest things that you see in that in the hearings was flavorings mentioned. Um, one, I can't remember the, the girl's name, but they, they said if you had a blank check, what would you spend the money on? And she said researching flavorings. Um, so in that new new legislation, I believe that they'll be saying that anything designed to produce for inhalation will require an emissions and toxicology testing for it. Mm. Therefore, it encapsulates the whole market. That, I believe, will happen. I've also heard that... They'll probably lie they like, like Volkswagen did. Yeah, they like the <laughs> idea kind of, of um, <laughs> strong nicotine strengths as something that there was, quite, there was looking at, increasing the nicotine strength from what it is now. Um, bottle size and tank size increasing because there's no scientific reasoning why they're no, so small. No, no, we all so I, I think in the new one, they might, you might see nicotine strengths go up, bigger bottles, bigger tanks, but heavier regulation on the production of products. Um, and whether or not we'll see a regulatory, you know, body set up where we can join and be association members. That you know, there is associations out there in the minute. Mm. But I don't think it's, you know. It's whether there's enough incentive to join them. <laughs> oh, um, perhaps only the anyway. usual joke in chat about, <laughs> about, with Merck about the true tank, and he agrees about the coils, he likes them. Um, AVC, I thought it was just an updated section for plain, oh, plain packaging on tobacco products. Didn't know that applied to vaping. He's talking about the TPD2 as well. Yeah, pitching grounds, there's a lot mentioned in that, but the tobacco <coughs> product directive obviously is the tobacco product directive, so it does cover tobacco. Mm. So there, there was talks about taking the Australian pitching grounds and things and re, re changing ours. That obviously only falls on the tobacco factor of it, not the electronic section of that, because the whole thing will be rewritten, so it'll be to do with tobacco, herbal products. I think there's novelty tobacco products covered under it, and there's, there's a few different sectors of the tobacco market that, that get that so i think that's where it'll come into play 
And Matt Benson oh. is touching on what you said about um, PG, but with VG, 240 degrees, uh, so he doesn't go over that to uh, for formaldehyde. Where are we? Sorry, cross that off. Have I nearly caught up? Or am yeah, I still? Oh, oh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> Sorry, say again. Um, I went up and speaking to someone who's regarding the testing and submissions and things and, and emissions and what have you. Apparently, there's no no um, set guidelines to follow with the test. So you could say um, you can send your rhubarb and custard off for an emissions test, but tell them to do it on a uh, an all this X at 10 watts, you know, you, there's no, you have to test it. And I believe it shouldn't be wattage, I believe it should be temperature. And it should be an average maximum, so say 250 degrees C. We test all liquids at 250 degrees C. Um, and that gives you the, yeah, the top end. Maximum that's a hard one as well, because some people vote, vape in voltage, some people vape in wattage. Well, the companies that send them off are, are choosing what they would like. So you, you get to choose what test you would like to produce the emissions that you then submit. So yeah. you can, anyone can manipulate these. This is where, because we've had this, this bottle pulled from the shelf, we're on about, there's potential we're going to say two liquids every month get sent off for independent testing. We'll pay for that. Just to try and call out people's bluffs. Yeah, because if they've had the testing done, we'll have our testing emissions, we'll send it off and have it done at a realistic temperature of what people vape at. But if yeah. our companies are under yeah. to get the exact emissions, you know, we you will see that then. So I'd like to see a, a, a set temperature that every liquid should be tested at. Yeah. For realistic emissions, you know. Iggy has just put probably one of the best comments I've ever read, I think. Increased tax on cigarettes... And you're laughing. <laughs> in the UK, it never worked. Smoking drives poverty and social inequality. It, it, I completely agree with that. Taxing cigarettes never did work. If you're a smoker and addicted, you've just got to find the money from somewhere. Um, and it, when you look at the tax, though, and we see the tax being put in place in the UK to, to help people um, when they become ill, so obviously you start smoking and you smoke for 20 years, there's probably, I don't know the statistics, there's probably an amount of money that they're going to have to spend on you when you become sick. So obviously that tax money that they're taxing you is, is paying for the, the aftercare that's followed up by... You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? The road fund licence was meant to pay for holes in the road and that, right, didn't, yeah. <laughs> that, that didn't work. <laughs> right, yeah, if it's done for the right reasons and money yeah. goes to the right place, then yeah, yeah I suppose, yeah. Um, I, have I? Yeah, I have. I've nearly caught up. <laughs> Jez has got his farting bulldog again. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we're nearly there. So, selling point of the company to say, yeah, um, yeah, you're right, Matt. Let's put that last comment, and I'll put it up there. Should it be a selling point if a company could say the juice is optimal at such and such a temperature? Um, that that would be. A good thing as well, and it, it, the, the trouble is, everything is you have, but everything is it's not an exact science, is it? That's that's the trouble. And if you, a lot of people will not use temp control. End of. They just they buy it in wattage because it's simple, it's easy. They understand that. And I still think there's a percentage of people out there that are putting coils in their tanks. And, the, you know, I'm talking about RTAs now. And they haven't got a foggest about Ohm's Law or anything else. They're just putting a coil in. If it, oh, yeah, that, that fire, that, that works. And I can vape it. And I keep turning the, the wattage up. Those people are out there, I can assure you. Um, so very hard, very difficult. I have it's, it's getting temperature control into uh, a usable everyday, you know, system that mm. works. So the go, the go technology, I believe, is a step in the right direction because obviously that puts itself almost in. You press all the button, and it it will go into that temperature control setting or the replay, isn't it? Replay mode, I think it is. Yeah, and um, Kieran's right as well. Only if all devices temperature control worked hundred percent. And that's a good point too. Some are, are not good. 
Um, I've tried temp control. I thought I can't use it on this. It's it's not you know it's not working. I think the the, the incentive to innovate in that market sector <coughs> has come down. You know, it used to be a big thing and it was a big factor and nickel and, you know, titanium became a thing and everyone was looking at that market and obviously it fell off. So mm-hmm. obviously the innovations dropped and people aren't looking as much. I think the, the auto squonker is quite a clever system how it reads yeah. the temperature yeah. and then feeds the liquid. Yeah. Again, it's used a pump that I don't know whether or not they're going to last very long. I don't know. No, we don't know. Um, we don't know on that. I like the idea of it, the technology part of it, but the... The realistic use of it might be better. We're we're stretching over time, but I don't mind. We're you know we've had a lot to talk about tonight. You sometimes wonder if we can fill a show that tonight feels like we could just go on for another two hours, but we won't. <laughs> but I, I did think to myself, I have got. I teased everyone was it last week about a new stealth mod. I've got a real grotty little video clip of it. Um, I don't even know if I'm supposed to be showing you, but I will. Um, get my likes, thumbs up to 35, and I'll show you. It's on 33. How many are watching? 36. So <laughs> at least three of you haven't put a thumbs up. There it goes, 34. Now, I knew I'd drag another couple. Come on, one more, and I'll show you. <laughs> They're not going to do it now, out of spite. Everyone's like, I'm watching, but I've done it. Oh, you lot. Come on, one more. No. All right, I'll show you. Oh, there you go, 35. We've we've made it. Right, now I haven't done this before, so hopefully I can, I can find... Oh, my word, where is it? Here it is, I think. If this goes bandy, folks, don't blame me. I've never tried to play a movie clip on here before, so we'll try. Here goes. If I choose the right file. Try that. There you go. How nice is that? I can't see anything myself. You will do. You will do. It's delayed for you. It'll come through in about 15 seconds, I guess. Um, I've got up to 41 thumbs up now. They're all (laughs) all a bit delayed. (laughs) (laughs) So what do you all think of that? I personally think that looks a lovely stealth mod. Have you seen it yet? Has it come through? No, I'm running quite behind, I think. Oh, here we go. Okay. So it looks like a bit like um, a smaller version of... Uh, was it not the Helix? Was it the Helix? Helix. No. Not there's, the Helix. Oh, there's one or two people doing... There was a mod, it was going back. There's, oh. There's, there's the okay, SX, looks- that's the SXK one, which is, uh, I think, is it CS Sunbox? Um, okay. But designed with them, I think. So I don't think it's a clone, this one. I think it's designed in conjunction with. Um, it's all right. I, I got one sent to me as a like a sample, but I think so this that's other a one... collaboration with Sunbox and SXK. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So it might be an attempt to get the, the Sunbox products out into the mainstream a bit more. Yeah. Because they, they are yeah. difficult to get hold of. They're not the easiest thing. Who makes it? Who makes it side by side? No, it's not a six K. I I can't tell you yet. I'll tell you very soon. Sure. They're sending me a sample. I think I said at the end of this week, and when I get it, I'll tell you. But at the moment, I don't even think I should have been showed that video. That was one that the person I deal with put hers in her hand, I think, and and showed me. So <laughs> I shouldn't shouldn't really say any more. I, I also got, I didn't mention these earlier, I was going to tell everyone about these. I got these cards done. Um, hopefully you can see that. That's all the, the true juice with the flavours on, on there. And that's just true juice on the back. So pop one or two of them in some orders, I think, um, so people can see. And I think we're there. I think I've caught up in chat. I think I think we've done everything. We've certainly gone over time. It's ten past ten, so um, I think we'll we'll, we'll Last call. One, I was just about to say with the the salt of the paper saying the the two years for the, the implementation. I believe yeah, it's not going to be till about twenty twenty one that the, the change would occur. Sorry, 
no, he's put two years after Brexit, so that's probably another five years. Oh, two years after, well, yeah, yeah. I suppose, yeah, it's going to change after Brexit once that happens, yeah. Or if indeed yeah, so there'll be... it could be a little while before any of that actually If indeed happens, there'll but... be a Brexit, <laughs> who knows? Te- technically, the, the, only, the only way we're looking at it is the emissions coming off the short fill, which technically needs to be done now anyway, because it should be a safe product. So... There might not be. If anything, it could be good that we see. So it might be a good thing to look forward to, maybe. Yeah, I bigger think tank. It, yeah, well, definitely bigger tanks because that really is a. I, I get annoyed about that. I, there, there's no reason why we should be restricted to two mil tanks. I think it's an absolute nonsense. I really do. But I also believe if there was a, a good test for e liquid and not just one that analysed what was in it, like you say, like an emissions test, a a proper standardised test across the board that said, yes, this e-liquid has passed. Then we all know where we are. There there might be a couple of companies out there that do these and they're trying to make like a package segment. So it's a case you send the juice off and it's a full full package, you know, and everything's done. But it it will probably be a thing in the future. (laughs) Everyone's on about what Brexit. What Brexit indeed. Who knows? But uh, Joe, I'd like just thank you ever so much for coming. It's been a lovely insight as to your part of the business. You know, and it's, I always think it's, you know, we all work together. It's not, you know, I've, I've got you on the show to, to talk to you. I haven't got, you know, I'm not having in all. He's a competitor. You know, I, I don't look at it like yeah. that at all. You know, and, and, uh, and it's been a nice insight. So thank you ever so much for coming on. If you'd like to say your goodbyes to everyone. Oh, before you go, hopefully, am I right? Will you be having a YouTube channel one day? Are you thinking of that or not? What I don't want to do is start something that I can't carry on with. So depending on free time, et cetera, could if there is enough, I believe I've got enough free time to do it. You got a Facebook page? We do have a Facebook page and Instagram. Again, it, it's a bit juggly at the minute with everything. Um, so potential of new staffing in the future would bring a little bit more time for things like that or getting other staff members to do that could be a, right. something that could be in the future. I think it'd be nice. So but it could be. Yeah. It could be. And it's obviously it'd be nice to have you on again. So sorry, once again I interrupted. Would you like to yeah. say your good, goodbyes? <laughs> yeah, good, goodbye everybody and thanks for watching. Um, appreciate it. Yeah, nice to have a little chat. Excellent stuff. And yeah, a remind tomorrow night I'll be on another show. As if you haven't had enough of me this week, um, I'm on the Three Men and a Vape show with David, uh, Simon, and Aiden. So if you if, if you can stomach me again, I'll be on Aiden's channel tomorrow night. Um, thanks. Everyone who's in chat, all your comments tonight, as always, have been superb. But one idiot, but we got rid of him. Um, so thanks for that. You've come up with some blinding questions and, and you know, really good questions. And without you, there is no show for me on a Tuesday night. It would be very boring. So, um, yeah, thanks thanks for your, your input on that. Um, and until hopefully next week, I'm not entirely sure, but it should be. I'll see you soon. Take care. And thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.